Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India of those in uh, models of neurons. So, we as we discussed in the previous lecture, we are taking only rates uh, as responses in this case and not really considering timing of spikes in general and so and with that we are building towards more uh, realistic models uh, if possible uh, with biological basis. So, the first two rules that we have discussed are the correlation based rules uh, and the covariance based rules. So, uh, interestingly as you saw, so uh, let us just remind ourselves, we have uh, this uh, uh, rate of change of uh, w uh, with a time constant this is equal to v u and when we average over multiple input patterns, uh, then this translates to q into w, where q is the correlation matrix. And similarly, in the covariance rule, there are two of them, tau w dw dt uh, is equal to v minus theta v, which we will replace with the average activity of v times u or or is equal to v times u minus theta u uh, where the theta u again will be taken as the average of u and these turn out to be when we uh, average over multiple input patterns u we get the rule that is the covariance rule which is cw uh, so, so what uh, are the problems with these two? Both of these are unstable, that is the weights uh, sort of diverge. Um, another problem with the correlation rule is that there is no LTD here because it is continuously increasing because V and U are both positive. Uh, and uh, so, that is why the threshold is introduced in the covariance rule and it is made the covariance by making it the average of the input activity for the input threshold and average of the output activity for the output threshold. And uh, here we can get LTD. But uh, now if you observe uh, in this uh, particular case where uh, in the covariance rule we have tau w dw dt the original uh, form where we have v minus theta v which is the average of v times u. So, in this case, uh, if we set v to be 0, that is there is no output activity no matter what the input activity is. Um, so, then that becomes a problem in the sense that you still get LTD, although it, it is seemingly correct in the sense that uh, the input activity is not driving any output activity. And so, the synapse uh, will depress and die, but uh, evidence shows, experimental evidence shows that you require some um, postsynaptic activity in order to get uh, uh, long term depressions uh, LTD. So, here momentarily if V is 0 uh, and uh, we would still get uh, 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 depression or LTD, which is uh, not correct in the in the sense that it is not supported with experimental evidence. And similarly, we need both pre and post synaptic activity to observe uh, LTD. And so, here it is in the other case, 
uh, we have v times u minus average of u. So, so again here if we set u to be 0, uh, then again we see that uh, there is still LTD without any presynaptic activity. Now, of course, if u is always 0 that is fine, but when uh, there are periods when u is 0 and you still keep on getting LTD due to postsynaptic spiking that is not supported by evidence. So, we require both pre and postsynaptic activity. So, the problem of not LTD not being there is removed by introducing a threshold from the Hebb's correlation based rule. And uh, by introducing a threshold, the problem that we are getting is that uh, there is uh, uh, LTD without presynaptic or postsynaptic activity depending on which more version of the model we are using. And uh, so, uh, that led to probably the most realistic such rate based plasticity models which is the BNN Stock, Cooper and Munro. Uh, learning rule or the BCM rule. So, in this case uh, what we see is that uh, we set the DW DT with this tau w as the time constant and that is equal to our V u times V minus theta v. So, here the rule is uh, very similar to the uh, previous one, but uh, if in this case if let us say our v is 0, then our weights are not updated because it is also proportional to v itself and so our w remains constant. So, this way we remove the requirement uh, of I mean we remove the uh, limitation of the covariance rule uh, where we are using v uh, explicitly another v explicitly to control for that lack of postsynaptic activity leading to depression because in such scenarios w becomes a constant whatever it was. So, in terms of the stability if we uh, look at this uh, particular rule then um, if we consider again as we did for our norm w square and how it changes with time. Then uh, let us also multiply that with the uh, t the tau w and so that becomes our twice we uh, tau w and uh, in, in that case we multiply it with w and d w d t and so now we replace d w d t with the term above and uh, what we have is twice tau w times w times v u. Um, times v minus theta v. So, for uh, simplicity we will uh, remove the tau w because it is simply a uh, scalar and so what we have on the right hand side that is the derivative of the norm times the tau w is w times uh, mm, or rather the tau w, tau, tau w is actually removed because with the tau w dw dt is the term that uh, we have I am sorry. So, we have w times v times u times v minus theta v. Uh, so, now remember that we have our um, v equals w uh, dot product with u which is if we take because v is a constant we take it out this is w times u and we simply get here uh, twice v square and we have v minus theta v and this theta v we will again take it as average of v that is if the activity is 
uh, above the overall average, then we will have uh, potentiation and if the activity is below the overall average that would lead to depression. Remember this tau w is uh, extremely uh, I mean the time constant are over very large time scales that is we require um, a number of such events to actually see changes in w. So, w changes at a very very long time scale that is it is extremely slow. So, uh, here we have we put in this average of v and so now uh, if we do uh, do the time average of or multiple of multiple patterns of uh, this uh, case then we will get the average uh, change of uh, the norm of w and so if we look at this uh, equation what we have is average of so basically the dw square dt turns out to be average on average turns out to be average of twice v square v minus v. So, in this case uh, if we take one v inside then we have and the two can come out we have v uh, times v square minus v uh, times average of v and average of that. Now, we know that v is greater than 0. So, let us say v has a minimum value, uh, uh, let us uh, <coughs> some particular v naught. And so, we can replace this v by this v naught and uh, can say that uh, this is going to be larger than that since v is positive. And so, ultimately our the, the, the norm square derivative depends on the average of v square minus v uh, and average of v. So, this average if we take the average in is essentially v square minus uh, v times v and what we have here is v square minus uh, v squared which is simply the variance of v. So, uh, since the variance is positive variance of v that is of the output activity v square this uh, is always greater than equal to 0 unless our v is constant then uh, what we are seeing is again that the norm of the weight that is the length in this case let us say Euclidean norm then length of the weight keeps on increasing. So, this being greater than 0 this is increasing and hence even the BCM learning rule in this form is unstable. Uh, so, this how do we get rid of this instability and again uh, we have to uh, remember uh, that uh, we have to base our changes and equations and whatever we uh, derive uh, based on um, realistic biological systems based on observations that we see. So, what uh, they uh, actually did I mean there are multiple versions of uh, this uh, rule the BCM rule. Um, so, here we have again V u times v minus theta v and what uh, um, what the rule uh, adds on to this is that let there be a sliding threshold or a changing thre threshold. So, in other words we introduced uh, d theta v dt with a time constant uh, theta. Uh, which is v square minus theta v. So, essentially what are we doing here? So, because uh, having the theta v fixed leads to instability, instability meaning that our length of the weight keeps on increasing unbounded or all of them I mean all the elements of the w reach some saturation value. Uh, 
um, in terms of uh, the plasticity even though there is LTD in there. Uh, uh, I mean LTD and uh, LTP both are at play, still the norm keeps on increasing. So, what this does is by introducing this theta v uh, dynamics uh, or the sliding threshold, you uh, make the threshold change uh, dynamically such that as the output activity increases, that is gradually as the output activity increases, our theta v is made to go higher and higher. So, this time constant of tau theta is such that uh, uh, it is faster than the time constant of this tau w in the sense that over a period of time in which the w is changing that is we are playing multiple patterns and w is changing very slowly within this period theta v is changing much faster and when w is getting finally updated or increased our theta v has gone over multiple values depending on what the output activity has been uh, in the uh, or the uh, in the over time so uh, as we see so if um, our uh, if we have a sort of a fixed uh, output activity going on, uh, then theta v would approach this v square value which is very large. Um, so, what are we then trying to do is basically, so uh, if let us say we have a number of um, synapses or inputs and so we have w1, w2 up to w n b if we say that n b is the number of uh, uh, synapses that we have or the number of inputs that we have onto the postsynaptic neuron. Then if let us say some of the weights uh, increase and uh, make it make the output activity large. Let us say so you are starting out with a flat set of weights and based on the input activity some of the weights uh, are increased and uh, the V became uh, larger, the output activity became larger and so the threshold is set to a larger value. With the larger value of the threshold what happens is that it gets more and more difficult for uh, the system to get potentiation and in fact uh, it leads to depression because of the v minus theta v term here. And uh, so, it gets more difficult for uh, every synapse in fact, the, the weaker especially the weaker synapses to uh, increase themselves. And so, uh, this leads to uh, competition between the synapses. So, that is uh, those outputs that uh, the, those inputs that are causing stronger outputs. Uh, are weighted more and the other sort of synaptic weights are dying down gradually. So, here we do not have the problem of uh, an unbounded growth of W because inherently we are putting in a threshold or rather uh, the, the inherent uh, uh, properties of these equations is putting in a uh, threshold based on the output activity that is stopping from the system from growing uh, out of uh, hand or for the weights to diverge. So, because our theta v uh, will be going towards v square, um, the, the more uh, activity we get, more input activity we get, it is more likely that our v minus theta v uh, is um, negative and because um, our v square I mean v is positive v square is very large and so it will take a while for the system to uh, get potentiation based on the inputs and it is likely that the largest inputs the largest uh, the weights that have increased the largest they might be able to drive it further forward. So, this competition that is introduced between the synapses. Uh, actually uh, is uh, important here and so uh, which was missing in all the earlier models. So, here uh, ultimately in the BCM rule 
what we have is that we have uh, uh, both LTP and LTD based on both input and output activity. Uh, we remove the problem of zero activity based depression. Depression. So, this is removed. Um, we have stability in growth um, uh, of synaptic weights. which is an important uh, factor which was not there in uh, the earlier models. And uh, on top of this, we are introducing competition um, among the synapses. So, this, uh, this was the, I was saying that BCM rule uh, comes the closest uh, possible uh, probably in terms of uh, biological learning in with these kind of uh, rate models in neurons. Uh, because that uh, uh, in fact, the more uh, large the output activity uh, turns out to be, the more difficult it gets uh, for the neuron to increase its uh, responses or increase the synaptic inputs. Uh, that uh, is uh, an observation which on the long time scale is also called uh, homeostatic plasticity. But the mechanisms of that are slightly different than what uh, the way this has been presented in the BCM rule. So, there are ways in which that uh, or there are biological mechanisms by which uh, actually there is scaling of the synapses. So, here we are introducing a constraint on the increase in the weights based on the output activity. So, there are uh, learning rules that are uh, based on uh, direct constraints on the weights and they are more similar uh, to the, um, the homeostatic plasticity kind of rules where, uh, uh, where we uh, observe uh, uh, some maintenance of uh, activity at an average level and uh, that requires direct uh, constraints on the weights. So, we will be uh, discussing those direct constraint based models or implementation of uh, synaptic plasticity in our uh, subsequent lectures. Um, thank you.